Hello my friends, in this video I'll be showing you the Autosomal DNA results, predicted phenotype traits and GD, GD match results of a Bantu individual from the Congo, that's where this individual is from. Uh, this person is a male and he lived in the colonial period, so he lived in the time when this region of Congo was owned by the French, by the English, I don't really, I think it's the French who owned this, I'm not ex exactly sure, it should be the French. Uh, so this person was a victim of colonization you could say uh and this person does not obviously have any admixture any european admixture this is just a sub-saharan african person sub-saharan african individual um in terms of their ethnicity uh, let me show you their ethnic calculator results with my trade predictor they are closest to hoisan hunter-gatherers followed by mota ethiopian hunter-gatherer Followed by Shamlaka. In reality, Shamlaka should be a lot closer to them than they are. Uh, but if you look at the distance, the distance to Shamlaka is about is about two times the distance to Hoisan. So it's kind of, and both of them are quite close. So it's kind of, um, you know, indecisive. It could be it could be even closer to Shamlaka if we got more SNPs for this sample. And as you can see, there's only 256 SNPs that this prediction is based on. It's not a very high quality file. In terms of the haplogroup, his Y DNA is E. Uh, we can actually find out a more detailed Y DNA here. Uh, E1B. So it's not showing up as E1B because nothing relevant for E1B was found in the file, which is kind of interesting because what markers, what other markers would you look at to determine if it's E1B besides those that are uh, a part of the calculation for my trade predictor? I wonder how they actually determined that this sample is E1B. Maybe they looked at some other markers that are downstream of E1B, like there is some other markers like A1. Yeah, maybe that's what they looked at and they determined that it's E1B. But it is not scoring any relevant markers for E1B that my trade predictor looks for. All right. Uh, and for the mitochondrial lineage, it looks like this individual's YDNA. Eh, ah, sorry. Mitochondrial DNA is L1C. L1C, mitochondrial lineage. All right, let's move on to their um, national quote results, what they might look like. Uh, oh, I didn't show you the ethnicity results, did I? Okay, so this is what this individual scores with Eugene's K36. Uh, what's interesting about this is his scoring. I thought he was scoring kind of high pygmy for somebody from the Congo, but actually he's scoring low pygmy for somebody from the Congo. So he's not even, he's not even all that Bantu, as I, I introduced him as a Bantu. But really, he's kind of like a mixture between Nigerian and Bantu. So he's very much shifted towards West Africa. You can see he's scoring 75.3% um, West African. That's actually very high West African for somebody who is a Bantu. So that's a little bit surprising to me. I wasn't expecting that. He's also scoring not that much Central African, which is also interesting. So once again, um, kind of like a mixture of West African plus Bantu is what he probably is. Uh, when with the two-way mode ap approximation, he's getting modeled as a mixture of Bantu plus Isan uh, from Nigeria, or Gambian plus Bantu South, or South Bantu plus Yoruba. All of these groups are Nigerian groups. So he's uh, basically a mixture of Bantu plus Nigerian is what it looks like, even though I initially introduced him as Bantu, which is very kind of surprising. Uh, what else is interesting about this sample is he's scoring quite a lot of West Caucasian, Oceanian, West Mediterranean, South Central Asian, Volga Ural, North Atlantic, all of these components. He could not have acquired these components from uh, European admixture because French people don't really score West Caucasian or Oceanian or South Central Asian or Volga Ural. Obviously, these components are remnant of something more archaic that this individual has. Um, Maybe some other admixture that's really ambiguous, some kind of back to Africa migration. I don't know. Uh, the fact that he maybe, maybe it's just a statistic, statistical noise, you know, it could be anything. But this is not the result of him being mixed with English people or French. Definitely not. He is not a mixed person. This person is 100% uh, Sub-Saharan African in his ancestry. And there is a very interesting four population approximation here where the distance is only 2.187, which is a really low distance for a calculator like Eurogenes K36, uh, a calculator with 36 components having a distance of 2.18 is absolutely crazy. 
uh, very low distance. But this uh, model is Gambian plus Bantu, South Bantu plus another South Bantu, Bantu plus 25% Isan from Nigeria. So most likely this individual is half Bantu, then one quarter Gambian and one quarter Isan. That's most likely the uh, the um, ethnic ethnic makeup of this individual. We'll be moving on to Nashakot now. So that's what he scores uh, with Nashakot, his closest phenotypes. This uh, it was a really good idea to do these closest phenotypes here because people have been asking me to bring back the AI generated prompts for phenotypes, and I was like, well, um, let me do something better, and I did something better. So the closest phenotype to this individual is this. Um, I guess I'm not a I'm not a big expert on uh, sub-Saharan African phenotypes. It looks it looks like he could be looking like this, followed by this. Once again, I'm not an expert, but it looks like he could definitely look like this. Uh, although this phenotype kind of, especially the guy, has sort of a little bit of an Arabic vibe, but maybe not. I don't know. It's hard to tell. And the third phenotype, once again, he could definitely be looking like this. Um, I read about this phenotype that it's nilotic. It's uh, actually an East African phenotype. But I can definitely imagine West African people having this kind of a look. All right, so for the models, for the mixed uh, mixed model models, there's actually mixed model models now where you can approximate a phenotype by uh, mixing two phenotypes together. So the closest mix is this plus this, which is very interesting. On the bottom, it's definitely not a sub-Saharan African. It's more of a North African, I would say. Uh, followed by that is this model. Followed by that is this model. And the last four, the last two models are actually sub-Saharan Africans plus other sub-Saharan Africans, which is very interesting. So this individual probably has some traits that are um, not so typical for sub-Saharan Africans. Uh, I added a couple new things here. I added a nose shape estimator, and I added a. Um, I had you remember back in back in November, I think I made my tool for eye shape predictor tool, and I incorporated that tool here into trait predictor so although you don't see these results here on the screen i don't think you should they're not that good uh they actually affect the score that you get for the for the phenotypes for this uh, oracle thingy so my guess is this individual has a eye shape that's typical for europeans or middle easterners rather than sub-saharan africans and that's why these three closest models are mixtures of sub-saharan african plus middle eastern people that's what i'm thinking in terms of the eye color, likelihood distribution, definitely very dark brown eyes. As you can see, the likelihood of darkest brown eyes is 90.5%. Very dark in eye color. Uh, likelihood of brown eyes actually is very low. It's only 9%. And anything below, anything lighter than brown is absolutely out of the picture. For hair color, likelihood distribution looks like this individual has black hair. Definitely very dark hair color. Uh, pretty much zero for any hair color other than black. And for skin color, color, likelihood distribution, looks like this individual definitely has dark brown skin. Uh, any other skin tone, also pretty much out of the picture. For hair texture, looks like kinky hair. And any other hair texture is pretty much out of the picture. Even curly hair is really unlikely here. Um, for coloring related variants, looks like he does not have blue eye haplotype 3. No blue eye haplotype 4. As you can see, BEH2 is actually not found in the file, and neither is BEH1. So other systems would struggle classifying his coloring just because of that. For example, if you if you upload them to Snipper Free, Snipper Free would struggle classifying his coloring. Uh, YSEC would YSEC would not. I'm going to show you after I close this tab what YSEC is going to give him. It's going to be very funny uh, when you observe it. Uh, no light color variants in this variation of SLC 45A2. No light color variants in this variation of SLC 2045A5. Definitely very dark. You can figure that out by looking at this list. That uh, this individual is very dark, and no light color variants in MC1R. All right, now let's check. Let's check uh, YSEC. Yeah. Um. Let me find this this person. Okay. Yeah, as you can see, YSEC is, is just completely failing to uh, come up with an estimation for this phenotype. 
as you can see, they predict him with brown hair. Uh, they predict him with most likely lighter shade of hair. Okay. Uh, blue eyes, 62.1% like blue eyes, very accurate. Precise, absolutely precise. Peak of precision. And once again, straight hair. Yes, that's true. A sub Saharan African with 100% probability of straight hair. The peak of precision right here. This, that's what I'm saying, man. That's what I'm saying. My trade predictor in Nashakor is by far the best, by far the best software for phenotype prediction. Uh, it is so far ahead of anything else that exists. And of course, I say it because I made it, but uh, you can listen to other people. You know, it's uh, it's just so far ahead. It's not even fair to compare. Uh, let's go ahead and look at polygenic risk scores and what kind of uh, traits this person has. Monogenic, polygenic traits. So it looks like this individual has below average score for schizophrenia. Really good to see. I'm comparing with Northern Europeans. I should be comparing with Africans. So below average odds of schizophrenia for Sub-Saharan Africans. Very good to see. Um, above average odds for type 2 diabetes. All right. Not that bad, actually. Um, below average odds of Alzheimer's. Really good. And below average odds of multiple sclerosis. Really good once again. Zero risk evidence for breast cancer out of two. Really good. Zero risk, risk evidence for testicular cancer out of 10. Once again, really, really good. Uh, really pleasant to see. Zero risk variance for celiac disease out of six. Really good. Really healthy so far. Zero out of zero for GSS. Unfortunately, not a very high quality file. A lot of the relevant stuff was not found here. Six for Crohn's out of 16, which is kind of bad. So we have to we have to look out for Crohn's. Reifenstein's zero out of zero. Unfortunately, nothing relevant was found. Really unfortunate. One risk variance for Parkinson's out of six. Uh, okay, not that bad. So it looks like this individual... <laughs> is not genotyped for any of the relevant variations in COMT and MAOA that have to do with what or versus what ER, but we can pretty much with an, make a very, very accurate guess that this individual is probably a what or in both COMT and MAOA just by knowing their ethnicity. Um, it is very uncommon for Sub-Saharan Africans to be anything other than what yours. So he's probably a what or in both COMT and MAOA. Uh, he's got no derived, no gold or no variance in the RG2 Pro for 19 Pro variation, so high, higher odds of schizophrenia. Once again, that's very typical for uh, Sub Saharan Africans. He does not have the A1 and TAC1. Once again, very typical for Sub Saharan Africans. Um, it looks like he does not have long form 5 HTTLPR. He's got short form 5 HTTLPR, and therefore he does not have a decrease in the risk of depression. So he's got a slightly higher than average odds of depression. And he's got CT in this variation of HT. HTR2A, I can't pronounce it. I just added this uh, this gene um, like yesterday, and I don't I don't I don't even think it's on the H yet on the H version. Not sure. So this slightly increases the risk of suicidal behavior and depression, and normal risk of sexual dysfunction when taking SSRI antidepressants. All right, and he's got the gene type in this variation of HTR2A, which leads to lower odds of suicidal ideation. So it looks like he's uh, pretty much average. I can't say that he's too predisposed to depression just based on his three genotypes. Um, I can't say he's protected from it either. All right, nothing for, for relevant. Uh, nothing relevant for autism was found. Nothing for for DDC was found for lactose persistence. Actually, this is very interesting. He's got a gene in this variation, which means this individual is heterozygous for the European lactose persistence mutation and probably is not lactose intolerant. Somehow, this person has the European lactose persistence mutation. Uh, now. It's very surprising. I did not, um, you know, when I record my videos, I don't look at them beforehand and then, um, and then record. I sort of, when I record my videos, I sort of show you my first first uh, impression. I show you my uh, first hand reaction to the samples results. That's what you're watching. So I wasn't even I wasn't even expecting that. Wow, that's crazy. That is crazy. So uh, is it because I don't know how that happened? Maybe he does have some European admixture, or maybe it's a genotyping error. But then again, I never saw, I, I have never seen this genotyping errors in this region before. I've never, it probably isn't a genotyping error. It probably isn't. I think he may actually have a European, uh, European ancestor, which is very interesting. Okay. Wow, that's crazy. That is crazy, man. And he's got the genotype in OXTR, which is the two variants for higher levels of empathy. Most likely not East Asian, all right? He's not a sociopath. For diabetes, it looks like he does not have type 1 diabetes. Hemochromatosis, nothing relevant was found. Alzheimer's, it looks like he does not have any risk for Alzheimer's out of those that were found. 
for multiple sclerosis. It looks like he does not have any risk variance in HL aging. Really good. Uh, cardiovascular. I think we're going to skip that. Myopia. I think we're going to skip that. Ooh, another crazy thing. Okay. Okay. Another crazy thing that I discovered here is that he has micropenis. He has TT genotype in this variation and he has micropenis. So, okay. Now we know for sure that um, this genotype as well as this genotype right here for lactose persistence are both completely wrong and they are genotyping errors. Whatever chip they used to sequence this individual's file, uh, to sequence this individual's genome, whatever chip they were using is obviously not very good because this is completely unbelievable and also this is also completely unbelievable, completely out of left field. Okay, good that we found that here. Uh, obviously, he does not have micropenis. Uh, pretty much nobody does. It's so rare. It's so uncommon. Uh, and to be homozygous for it, it is just... The odds are incredibly, incredibly low. Like one to literally a million. Really low. He's a mix of muscle types, likely more sprinter rather than endurance athlete. All right. He's got one fat gene variant and FTOs are and f He's got high roads of obesity and sleep apnea. Uh, all right, a little bit predisposed to obesity. And he does not have East Asian genotype in EZAR. His genotype in EZAR is very typical for uh, Europeans and Sub-Saharan Africans and not East Asians. It looks like he's not a carrier of cutaneous albinism type 1B. It looks like he does not have any risk variance for familiar Mediterranean fever. He's got this genotype in H M MTHFR, which leads to lower odds of various health issues. Really good to see. For cancers, he's got this gene type, which leads to six times reduced risk of testicular cancer. Really good, to, really good to see. For leukemia panel, looks like he's got lower odds of leukemia. Really good to see once again. Allergies, androgen receptor, Crohn's. Nothing relevant was found here. So we remember he was scoring high for Crohn's. Uh, none of those risk variants for Crohn's came from the three most important variations that I show on the screen. So uh, it means that his score is not really all that valid, which is good because he had a high score. For Canavan syndrome, looks like he's got zero risk variance for that. Really good to see. For HIV and AIDS panel, something okay. 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 I don't know if this is a um I'm not sure if this is a if this is a um, genotyping error. It could be. Let's research that actually. Let's go ahead and research that. Um so I, I, I don't remember which... Yeah, the CLU is the one that causes a 90% reduction. Okay, no, it, it it is not a genotyping error. Okay. All right, this is genuine. This is a real real genotype. Because I was under the impression that the CLU here is only something that's found in Europeans. But I guess it's not. So, yeah, it's just a good genotype. He's got two protective variants here that protect from HIV. Really good to see. All right. Really good to see. Uh, for muscular dystrophy myopathies, it looks like he does not have any risk variance for that. Once again, really good to see. For color blindness, no risk variance in OPN1SW, which is the only gene where anything was genotyped at all. Uh, for OPN1MW and OPN1LW, nothing was found uh, irrelevant was found in his genes whatsoever. Not a very high quality file. Um, this we already know. He's heterozygous for the FTO for FTO gene, and he's got this genotype, which leads to much higher BMI, which is very interesting. Actually, this is kind of rare. I don't see the allele here very often. So that pretty much concludes our video on this sample. Uh, thanks for watching my video until the end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and you can download this file in 23andMe format from link, which is in the description of the video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.